Hi, the lecture today is about the derivatives of polynomials and exponential functions. What are polynomials? Uh, polynomials are expressions you make out of uh, uh, powers of x that are multiplied by some numbers and added and subtracted. So for example, if I have 5x cubed uh, plus 7x squared minus 11x, say plus 17, this is a polynomial question is if I want to differentiate this can I come up with a rule uh, that will do the job for me quickly we have uh, learned how to investigate derivatives uh, based on the definition and the limit process and now we want to make our job easier in finding answer to this type of question so that's going to be first item on agenda. Next uh, we want to investigate exponential functions. Who are exponential functions? Well, for example, 2 to the power of x, that's an exponential. When the variable is in the exponent, we customarily refer to that as an exponential function. Suppose I want to differentiate that. What is that going to be? Uh, or 3 to the x. How about that? Uh, perhaps the most important function in this category which you might have seen in your uh, college algebra or pre-calculus classes is exponential with a particular base which is called the base of natural logarithm e we want to know what that one is uh, just to remind you right now uh, e was a particular number uh, just like pi is a number so is e and its approximate value is 2.71828 so on it goes <clears throat> okay uh, we have done uh, a lot of the work already but just to uh, refresh our memory if I have a function f of x is equal to say x squared how would we go ahead and find the derivative of that we said the derivative is written as f prime of x and that's obtained by this limit process which is uh, f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h goes to zero so we have done uh, many exercises like this here let's just quickly go ahead and see what happens you do a substitution x plus h squared minus x squared over h as h goes to 0 a numerator becomes 2xh plus h squared over h and that one uh, is just h times 2x plus h over h h is cancel that is the main step here h goes to 0 and the answer just becomes 2x so we had uh, seen this kind of exercises before uh, in a uh, large number of cases and uh, I did this just to refresh your memory I have if I have a function x squared I want to differentiate it the answer turns out to be 2x another item we learned last time is that there is another notation a bit more professional than this prime notation but a bit more cluttered so if I want to write in the other notation I use this differential operator d over dx of x squared is equal to 2x <coughs> in this prime notation it, 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 the assumption is that you know what your variable is that your variable is x and you are differentiating with respect to it 
here we are explicitly stating what's the variable or problem and we write the answer in this fashion <coughs> okay let me just remind you that you have seen uh, uh, the derivative of x itself derivative of x if you differentiate x just go ahead and repeat this process we went through here uh, or even better than that what is the slope of the straight line x you see that the derivative is just 1 or d dx of x is just 1 and go ahead and do this exercise for x cube suppose I have x cube and I want to differentiate that you have had this in several of your exercises and the answer turns out to be 3x squared Here's another way of writing it using Leibniz notation. d dx of x cubed is 3x squared. Let's go ahead and put all of these things in a table to see if we can discern any kind of a pattern. So here on the left side, I'm going to write my function. On the right, I'm going to write the derivative of that function. So for x, the derivative was 1 for x squared the derivative was 2x for x cubed I left this thing to you to do well, the answer is 3x squared question is can you guess what's going to be the answer next time around how about x to the power of 4 what do you think the derivative is going to be one important thing is in mathematics is discerning uh, a pattern looking at these can you see what is the pattern of the entries on the right hand column well, obviously this exponent comes in front and the exponent is lowered by one notch so from 3 I come to 2 from 2 I come to 1 this is really 2x to the power of 1 but the power 1 doesn't get to be written also x itself simply means x to the power of 1 so really what happened from this side to this side is that the exponent came up front and the exponent was lowered by one notch so it came down from 1 to 0 uh, you know x to the power of 0 is just 1 times 1 and the answer is just 1 so the pattern that you probably guessed is correct that the derivative of x to the power of 4 will be uh, so what is it going to be? It's going to be 4x cubed and so on. If I had x to the power of 10 the derivative of that will be 10x to power of 9. So this answer we are giving is based on a guess from checking a few cases on the right hand side and extrapolating from there and guessing these answers. Uh, that is a correct uh, guess. Of course that doesn't make a proof. We have to work a lot harder to prove that these statements are correct. But for the time being uh, that is sufficient for us. <coughs> Let's go ahead and write this two notations of it. D dx of x to any power n is n x to power of n minus 1. Another notation for this would have been x to power of n prime is n x to power of n minus 1. So all of these are special cases of this rule we have uh, one entry here we might as well explain that as well if I have one what would be the derivative of one you know the derivative of a constant is zero but I claim that this is a special case of this rule as well one itself is x to the power of zero the differentiation rule says take the exponent put it up front lower the exponent from whatever it is from 0 it's going to come down to minus 1 0 times this expression is going to be 0 with some care these two are seen to be the same thing <coughs> okay 
A couple of things to mention about this thing before we move on uh, to the next issue. Uh, first item I is that uh, the rule is actually a lot more general than what we are making out of it here. For example, this rule can be applied to this case. If I have 1 over x, I can still apply this rule to find the derivative. Why so? Because 1 over x can be written in this notation. It just so happens that the exponent is going to be negative. Power of this rule is that it is true even for uh, negative exponents. It's in fact true for all sorts of exponents. So here I go ahead, take the minus 1, write it up front, that exponent minus 1, I have to go down from the air, from minus 1 going down, I go to minus 2. Writing this in another style would be minus 1 over x squared. <clears throat> now you have seen this example in many exercises before. You have done this type and even more complicated type, 1 over x. The derivative of 1 over x turns out to be minus 1 over x squared and so on. So if I go ahead to x 1 over x squared, I can write it as x to the power of minus 2. The derivative of that is minus 2 x to the power of minus 3. So this came up front. Going down from minus 2, we get to minus 3. A better way of writing this answer is minus 2 over x cubed. And so on. Another case that's very interesting is that uh, the rule, as I mentioned, applies to any kind of exponents. For example, we had many cases where we calculated the derivative of radical of an expression. Radical x, well, what's another way of writing radical x? Radical x is x to the power of 1 half. What's the derivative of that? Just like any other case, you bring the exponent up front, 1 half. You take this exponent and subtract 1 from it, so you get minus 1 half. Writing this in a more civilized fashion, I get 1 over 2 I write here. This item goes into the denominator, and negative becomes positive here. The exponent 1 half gives us a radical, so it's 1 over 2 radical x. Let's do another example. Suppose I have cube root of x. What's another way of writing it? It's x to the power of one third. I write the derivative. So one third of x to the power of. What's a new exponent? Figure that by yourself and come back. <coughs> the exponent here, one third. You take the exponent, subtract one from it. Take the common denominator if you have to, you get minus two third. So one third minus one gives you minus two third. Well, how do you write this type of, of fractions? Uh, negative exponents. Here's a factor. This three is index of the radical, and the exponent of x inside the radical will be two. So uh, these cases you see I have written here, uh, these are important enough for to actually memorize them because you have to be able to produce them quickly. But uh, aside from memorizing, you have to know this general rule. We are going to have many applications of this. So let's write for any power n. So long as that power is a constant number, it's very important. So long as n is
<coughs> this becomes an important issue at the end of the semester. So just remember this exponent uh, is any one of these type of numbers you see, 1, 2, 3, 10, minus 1, minus 2, minus a half, pi, e, any of these things are fine. These are just ordinary constant numbers. What is not a constant? Well, a variable is not a constant. You cannot have an x in the exponent. So that is not part of the deal right now. So let me just emphasize that if you have uh, x to power of even a strange looking number like pi, you still can differentiate this thing just like any other one. If there is x to the power of radical 2, you don't see these things all that often, but just to emphasize, this is radical 2, x to the power of radical 2 minus 1. But what if you want to have some something in the exponent that has an x also in it? Well, you have to wait quite a while to answer that question, what's the derivative of that? That's going to be a bit more complicated. So right now, just remember, the exponent is a fixed number, not a variable. Then you can use this rule. Now, question comes up. Uh, for those of you interested in mathematics and not just the application, how do we know this is really true? How do we know that our extrapolation based on these two, three cases is a really a correct guess? We just guess this answer. So a student interested in mathematics always ask why so? And that takes you to the next level, opens up uh, new horizons to you, and makes you stronger when you ask that question and, uh, and try to find the answer. So I go ahead and try to answer the question for this case. Uh, many of the cases we will be talking about, we just uh, leave it uh, uh, based on some intuitive reasoning, but every now and then it's a good idea to go ahead and learn why. So here we are trying to answer why is it so that the derivative of x to the power of n becomes n x to the power of n minus 1. There are a couple of ways of answering this question. One of them is based on an identity you have seen in high school. And I review that first, and then that brings us to this. So a basic identity. Do you remember do you remember how to factorize for example x squared minus y squared? I'm sure all of you know how to do that. Well that's x minus y times x plus y. Well, next, do you know how to factor x cubed minus y cubed. It's a little bit more involved, but you have all seen this thing in college algebra. It's x starts with x minus y. And what's the other one? The long expression here starts with x squared. Next term is xy. Next term is y squared. It's very easy to check this identity. Take x, multiply by all the terms here. You get x cubed plus x squared y plus x y squared. Now take minus y, multiply by all of these things. I'll write these items first and put the right on the right hand side so that you quickly see the cancellation. y times x squared, x squared y, y times x y x y squared y times y squared y squared so y cubed and now you see cancellation and that expression shows itself x cubed minus y cubed 
Let me see if you can guess what is the factorization of x to the power of 4 minus y to the power of 4. We have learned our lesson that all of these things have a factor of x minus y. And the question, what's the next one? The big expression. Well, we start with one less power. In fact, x4 is divided by x, and you are getting x cubed. And who are the rest? Well, we learned our lesson here. Power on x goes down, power on y builds up. So next one, can you guess what's the next one? It's x squared y plus x y squared. And the last term here is y cubed. Just go ahead and write this thing one more time, say for x to the power of 5 minus y to the power of 5. Follow this pattern and then you will see. Well, the question is, uh, up there we are dealing with any power n. So if I want to write this thing with power n, what's going to be the right hand side? This is a very good exercise for you to try to figure out what's the right hand side. You have to explain the pattern that you have seen through all these uh, five examples so far. So what does the power of x start at? It is, of course, 1 less than what you had here, n minus 1. Who is next? Well, we go down on this. It becomes n minus 2. The y starts to build up. And how about the next? The next one is x to the power of n minus 3. y builds up even more. And so on it goes. All the way to, and who's the last one? Well, just like any of these exercises, last on y, just like the first on x, and minus 1 shows up here. Next question. How many terms is on the right-hand side? Well, the problem is that well, you didn't write all of them. How would I know how many are, there are? Well, you have to be able to tell what the answer is, not by just counting what you see, but by following the pattern and reasoning yourself, reasoning to your answer. So if you wish, go back here and see. Uh, when we started with power 3, we had three terms. What do you mean by a term? These are, these are each of them a term. And here I had four terms. One, two, three, four, so three terms. Here we have four of them, and so on. So how many would we have here? We have, of course, n terms on the right-hand side. Okay, what does this have to do with the differentiation? <coughs> well, if I have x to the power of n, and I want to differentiate it, what I'm really calculating, based on our definitions, uh, a little bit perhaps unfamiliar way of writing it will be x to the power of n minus now I'm going to go ahead and use our earliest definition of uh, derivative y to power of n divided by x minus y as y tends to x I hope uh, everybody comfortable with this way of writing the definition of derivative of this function. So if I want to differentiate this, I go to another point. I'm going to call the other point y. So one point is x. My base is x. And I'm going to another point, um, calling it a y that other point come close to the first point. Now, this ratio is just the ratio of this to that, which is going to be just this long expression on the right-hand side, which is limit of x to the power of n minus 1, x minus 2y, and so on, all the way to y to the power of n minus 1. I didn't bother to write that one anymore. 
Now, as y comes close to x, what happens to every one of these terms? For example, here, what happens when y comes close to x? Well, when y comes close to x, this becomes, or oh, this one by itself is x to the power of n minus 1. This one becomes x to the power of n minus 2. Now, y comes close to x, and so on. Every one of these things come close to the same base you have here, and this y here also comes close to x, becomes x to the power of n minus 1. Now you go ahead and simplify each of these terms. What is this? n minus 2 is the power on one piece, 1 is the power on the other one. What is the net power? It becomes x to the power of n minus 1. So this becomes x to the power of n minus 1 this one becomes n minus 1 and so on all the way. Now comes our observation. How many of these things did we have? You remember here we said we have n of them. So when you are adding up n identical terms, you just have n times any one of them. So this is the derivative of that expression, x to the power of n. If you want to differentiate it, and becomes that. Okay. Uh, if you wish, you can go over that uh, proof uh, one more time, or if you want, you can bypass the proof and just go with the intuition we built that this formula sounds to be correct. Remember, the proof that we gave just works for natural numbers. If the power is 1, 2, 3, and so on, it works. But that doesn't, uh, this proof that we gave would not be good if the exponent was, say, 1 half, 1 third, radical 2, pi, or any of these things. This proof would not be sufficient for that. Uh, for that, we have to wait uh, quite a bit. But we are just going to take it that it is true, and then we just move on to the next uh, uh, item that we have. Now once we have the derivative of these uh, terms, uh, the, the single term by itself is called the monomial. Uh, is there just one term there? Now suppose I have something uh, slightly more complicated. So by now we have learned that if I have x to the power of 5, I want to differentiate it. We have digested that this becomes 5x to the power of 4. Now suppose I didn't have just x to the power of 5, but I had 2 times x to the power of 5. What is the derivative of that? So general question is, if instead of a simple function like this, I have some multiple of that, number multiple of that, like two times that or three times that, how do we calculate the derivative? Okay, when you double a function, it just stretches by that factor, and all the rises stretch by the same factor. Remember, slope was the ratio of rise over run. If all the rises are doubled, then all the slopes will be doubled, and slope of tangent line will be doubled. So the derivative of this, which is slope of tangent line, is going to be twice the derivative of that. So all I have to do is to double the answer I already have, 5x4. And the, the answer becomes 10x to the power of 4. Now, typically, we want to go in a single step from here to here. How do we talk about it? Say, so take the exponent, multiply by the number up front, so 5 times 2 makes 10. Take the exponent and reduce it by 1, and you are going to get 4. So, <clears throat> let's practice this thing again. Suppose I had 7x to the power of 5. I want to differentiate it. Say 7 times 5 is 35 and 5 comes down to 4. <clears throat> the property can be uh, proven in general, that is, if you have a constant C, a number, just like any of these numbers, 
and you are multiplying it by some function and you want to differentiate the whole thing if you wish you can go ahead and differentiate your function and then multiply by the constant that you had. So what's the significance of this? The significance is that you had the multiplication here and you had a differentiation here. Two operations. They compete for your attention so, so that you pay attention as to who is going to be done first. Are you going to differentiate first? Here you are differentiating first and multiplying later. Here you dif multiply first and differentiate later. We are saying that we are lucky that it doesn't matter in which order you do it, you always get the same answer. So that is one thing to remember. Next, we want to go to things that are a little bit more complicated. Suppose I have one function I know how to differentiate, say x squared, and I have another function I know how to differentiate, say x cubed. And say I go ahead and add these two functions, and then I want to differentiate the sum. Well, if you add two functions, the rises will just add up. For the same run, the rises will simply add up. And then slope. Slopes will just add up. If the slopes just add up, then so will the slope of the tangent line. What that all means is that if you are differentiating sum of two functions, you can go differentiate each part separately and then add them later. So again, just like the previous case, you have two operations competing for your attention. Here's the addition, here's the differentiation. Who should go first? Here we are adding first and differentiating later. Here are differentiating first and then adding later. You say, fortunately, they are the same. That is, the answer is just going to be 2x, derivative of this. We learn how to do that, x cubed. That's going to be 3x squared. Putting everything we have learned so far, uh, I might have a multiple in addition at the same time. Suppose I have 5x to the power of 4 plus 7x to the power of 10. I want to differentiate this. Well, the idea still applies that you can differentiate each piece. then add them later. In the act of differentiation here, you can differentiate each function first and then multiply later. By now, you know how to differentiate x to the power of 4. That's a 4 times 5 makes 20. x cubed, 7 times 10 makes 70. x to the power of 9. Now, of course, what we want to do is to go through this thing in one single step. So we say 4 times 5 is 20, 4 goes down to 3, 7 times 10 is 70, 10 goes down to 9. I had an addition here, I still have an addition here. By the way, if I had subtraction here, I'll have a subtraction here and subtraction here. If I had a subtraction, that just goes through just the same way that the addition goes through. So what we have here is a general rule which we call linearity. Linearity is a very important property, comes up in many different areas of mathematics in different shapes. Uh, here is the rule. Linearity for differentiation If I have some function, I know how to differentiate that. And I have some other function, I know how to differentiate that. And I am go ahead and multiply, multiply this by some number, multiply that by some number, and then I am adding or subtracting them. 
Now if I decide to differentiate the whole thing, I can do it the easy way, which is differentiate the function f, differentiate the function g, multiply them with an a and b later on, and then just add them or subtract them as the case might be. So linearity for differentiation means uh, these operations that you have, multiplication by number, addition and subtraction, and differentiation can be performed in any order and you just can't go wrong. Now we are starting with uh, simple rules for differentiation and there is a big danger that later on you try to treat all cases based on what you, this kind of rules that you see here. We are in fact in a kind of strange play position, we are kind of between a rock and a hard place. If we start with these simple rules, you tend to apply to cases that they don't apply. And if you start with the hard rules, well, you get discouraged and you just don't move along as well. So just be uh, uh, careful that what we said, this, so let me put a big danger sign here, only applies to addition or subtraction. This rule only applies to addition and subtraction tendency of many students is that to think whatever is here we can just postpone it and go ahead differentiate the pieces and whatever you are doing to those pieces just do them here now we are saying that's not the case there is a restriction you can only do these things with addition and subtraction not, for example, put multiplication or division or exponentiation or any of these things. None of those cases applies. Only addition and subtraction. Don't forget that. Uh, otherwise, you'll be in trouble. So, <clears throat> that is the case of linearity. Now, we are going to move on to uh, derivative of polynomials. So, what's a polynomial? Well, we have been doing it without calling it a polynomial. Here's a polynomial. Suppose the first example I had at the beginning of the lecture, say 5x cubed plus 7x squared plus 11x plus 13. If I want to differentiate that, say 3 times 5 is 15. x comes down to, power comes from 3 to 2. 7 times 2 is 14 power goes from 2 to 1. We don't write the power anymore. 11x. Derivative of 11x is just 11. If you wish, the exponent here is 1. 1 times 11 is just 11. Exponent goes from 1 to 0. x to the power of 0 will be 1. Derivative of 13. 13 is a constant. Derivative of that is just 0. So there is nothing to write. Even though this end part is the simplest part of it. That's where students make most mistakes. Notice what the derivative looks like. 13 totally disappeared. x turns into a 1. Okay, so that's the derivative of a polynomial. Next, we want to go to something uh, more advanced, which is derivative of uh, exponential functions. Okay, the material that we are going to present here is going to be more advanced than the other items we just started with. So the answer that we are going to give here is going to be a bit half-hearted. Uh, we are not going to say the whole thing. Uh, part of the mystery is going to be left there until we have uh, some other items in, in calculus done. And then we come back to uh, the whole story. So right now we just start with a example of a function, say f of x is equal to, say, 2 to the x 
question is what is f prime of x well we have to do the usual process limit of f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h goes to 0 let's write it here this is limit of this fraction is I have to substitute uh, here's item that gets substituted by this one x plus h I write 2 to the power of x plus h this is just a copy of what we had 2 to the power of x over h now our factorization here is a bit different than the factorization we have uh, done before uh, let me in the numerator I can write 2 to the power of x plus h as 2 to the x times 2 to the h okay, by the rule of exponent I could split them like this the other portion just stays now all I can do to this exponent is to factor 2 to the x out of it now notice h is the item that goes to 0 x has nothing to do with this limit 2 to the x whatever that is as is not influencing our limit process just multiplying it so I can just put it outside if I wish like if x was uh, some number 10 this will be 2 to the power of 10 whatever that number is I can put it outside of this limit so I remove the clutter a little bit this becomes 2 to the h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 well what is this we're trying to find a derivative and by now we have found let's write it let me emphasize we're trying to differentiate 2 to the power of x and that's what I have so far <clears throat> now 2 to the h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 is an expression that right now we can only investigate experimentally we don't have all the tools we need to dig into this completely and figure out what the limit is it's not as simple as those exercises I started with at the beginning of the exercise so here is the challenging portion of this what is this Well, easiest way to respond to that challenge now is to go to an experimental mode like here I make a table H and here 2 to the h minus 1 over h just put some numbers for h and let that number uh, go towards 0 how do you go towards 0 well if I put h equal to 1 here I get 2 to the power of 1 minus 1 over 1 that's just 1 it's not very exciting let's come close to 0 suppose I jump to, to point 1 if I put point 1 in this expression and go calculate 2 to the power of point 1 minus 1 over point 1 well, I would definitely need a calculator to handle this in this stage in calculus you just go ahead and figure out what it is like with your calculator you find out that's almost point 7 you come closer towards 0 2.0.01 you plug that in your calculator and you see the answer turns out to be from this expression turns out to be 6 9 5 6 and so on you make this thing a lot smaller the number hovers around this 0.7 it kind of stabilizes there like it becomes 0.69 for this one three four and so on <clears throat> so this tends to some number which is not as clean cut of a number as all those exercises we have seen so far something looks like some numbers 0.69 etc let me tell you a secret 
that's really logarithm of 2 but uh, pretend you didn't hear that so it's just some number we don't know about <coughs> so derivative of 2 to the power of x turns out to look like this important thing is that this is so let's write 2 to the power of x if you differentiate it you get some strange looking number 0.69 etc times the function you had started with this is very interesting derivative of a function is almost a copy of that function just multiplied by some number if you do this thing with 3 to the x story repeats itself just go ahead and do this experimentation and the come back you see in that case that the answer is something like 1.098 so on times 3 to the power of x exact same thing happens except that you will have 3 to the power of h here everything else same as before you calculate it and and the number that you stabilize to will be different but it is still a number <clears throat> this gives us uh, uh, some uh, question it would have been quite nice if this number wasn't so awful looking we would like this number to be a nice number well, what was a nice number uh, one is a nice number so here comes up a question what base should I start with that if I differentiate it the answer becomes a nice just one times that base to the power of X here I started with 2 to the power of X I ended up with 0.69 times the function I had 3 to the power of x, I went over 1, it became 1.1 almost, times 3 to the power of x. Question arises, what if I want to have a nice number here? Nicest number you can have is just 1. What number should I start with as my base so that the derivative formula looks that nice? Well, then you start to pay a price if you don't like this awful looking number here then you have to like another awful looking number over there and that is going to be 2.718 etc to the power of x is a particular function that if you differentiate it the answer to that derivative becomes just 1 times the copy of the function that you had to begin with so there was no free lunch you didn't like this now you have to live with that one well mathematicians agree to live with this one because uh, well that's what they like so this number gets to be called e it shows up in many different areas of mathematics so this is e so e is a number that if you differentiate it if you differentiate e to the x you just get copy of that function so perhaps that's the easiest differentiation formula maybe that's one reason to that justifies this number e and living with it is that you get the easiest differentiation formula derivative of this function is the exact copy of itself so what does that mean like in uh, those exercises that a function was given to you like a function like this was given and then you were asked to graph the derivative on the same page we'll go ahead and graph this thing and the graph turns out to be some totally different function okay so like here you had some function and you graph the derivative and the derivative turned out to be something else here we are dealing with a function that if you differentiate it let's, let's go ahead uh, 
here's a function my axis doesn't look nice but I cannot look at what I draw when I'm drawing it uh, it's a problem with my hardware okay so if I have my function e to the x and I ask you to graph the derivative of this this is essentially the only function that the derivative of it just coincides right on top of the function itself so if you go to those uh, Java applet uh, cases and experiment with variety of function try to kind of hammer it until your function and your derivative come to live right next to each other at the very end of all that hammering you see the function that you choose has to be exponential of x or essentially just a multiple of it and it's going to have that property so we have uh, uh, several things here we had uh, the formula for the derivative of exponential let me also write it in Leibniz notation so you get the exercise in both notation it's important to go back and forth between these two uh, the derivative of this function is itself uh, definition of the E for us now was it was a number with the property that if you take a limit of e to the h minus 1 over h as h goes to 0 you get just 1 let me take you back here and point out where did this come from if you take 2 to the power of h minus 1 over h take a limit of it it becomes some number like 0.69 you do the same game with 3 the limit of this expression becomes 1.1 we ask what to start with so that limit becomes 1 it means limit of e is a number that the limit of this expression becomes 1 okay so that is a uh, reason behind this particular looking and definition okay uh, let's uh, go to some uh, examples here suppose you ask uh, let me go to some uh, advanced examples say you have a function f of x given to you as say pi over x to the power of 10 question is what is f prime well we take our function try to write it in a format so that the rules that we have developed will be applicable what is the rule we have developed we have power rule power rule says if you have x to power of n then differentiate it in such and such way so we have to go ahead and write it in that format how do we write it in that format so let me emphasize again power rule says if you have x to power of n you can differentiate it in this fashion so first I have to make this thing look like that how do I do it I write it in negative exponent now, what is pi doing here well it's just a number like three point something we don't have to be concerned uh, with that if I want to find the derivative we learn take the exponent multiply by the number up front so minus 10 pi then take the exponent and lower it one notch so from minus 10 we come to minus 11 that's our answer 
if you want to write it in a different style for example to get rid of the negative exponents make it neater and nicer that would be the answer so that would be f prime so radicals uh, pi e and such numbers should not scare you they're just after all some other uh, number next uh, kind of question that comes up here let's take suppose I have f of x is equal to uh, x squared times x cubed plus x plus 1 question is find f prime okay the purpose of this um, question is to make sure that you remember that warning sign I talked about uh, pause for a moment go ahead and do this problem on your own and then come back and uh, if you have made the mistake that many students make hopefully you get corrected here and if you don't make a mistake then consider yourself one of the lucky ones okay so you pause and then you come back <coughs> And you put the danger sign here. Even though it's a very simple problem, it deserves a warning sign. It is not correct to go and differentiate this piece and that piece separately and multiply them. Remember, I told you here all the way back here. You might have a tendency to think that this simple rule applies all over the place. If I have two things I want to differentiate I can take turn take uh, derivative of each piece and then multiply them later on you're saying that has to be applied with care here you have piece number one is x squared piece number two is this parenthesis how do I want to differentiate here's a correct way go ahead and multiply if that is possible just multiply x squared times x cubed is x to the power of 5 x squared times x is x cubed x squared times 1 is x squared how do you differentiate it well that is simple you learn how to differentiate polynomials this becomes 5 x to the 4 plus 3 x squared uh, plus 2 x So finding f prime, f prime turned out to be this expression. What is the mistake? The mistake is to think that if you want to differentiate, uh, write a different color. So let me say it again. cannot go ahead differentiate the first piece and differentiate the second piece and then multiply them later on that's the logic that's going in your head it's saying that I have a multiplication to do here let's delay that let's differentiate that portion differentiate that portion and multiply them later so this doesn't work for multiplication doesn't work for division either none of those things is going to work the only thing it works for is addition and subtraction you go ahead you can go ahead and find out what this one is and you see that it clearly not the answer we are sure is the correct answer like you go ahead and find this answer this is 2x derivative of that one is 3x squared plus 1 if you multiply these this becomes 6x cubed plus 2x this is the final result of this method that's the correct answer here the correct answer is this this is incorrect and uh, 
over the years of teaching this topic, I haven't found a way of making sure uh, that the majority of students don't make that mistake. So uh, just look at that and make sure you understood what the whole issue is all about and uh, avoid this. Okay, another example. Suppose we are asked to calculate the derivative of this function f of x, x to the power of 5 plus x cubed plus 1, and uh, say I have x squared. What is f prime? Again, uh, about 50% of students make this mistake. We want to differentiate numerator, differentiate denominator, and then divide them. We don't have any such rule. That rule only applies to addition and subtraction, not to multiplication, not to division. So how can we differentiate this? Simplest uh, way of differentiating this problem right now is to go back to something from Algebra 1. In Algebra 1, if you have a fraction like this, you can always think that it came from adding several fractions. You can go break it apart. The opposite of doing common denominator, adding things. This is a simple form of decomposition. Okay, simple decomposition. You just break it up. If we go ahead and break up our fraction, so f of x can be written as x to the 5 over x squared, x cubed over x squared, plus 1 over x squared. Now simplify term by term, x5 over x squared, that is x cubed. x cubed over x squared, that is x to the power of 1. 1 over x squared, I better write it in the power notation. Why in power notation? Because now when you differentiate, your life is going to be easier. 3x squared, derivative of x is 1, derivative of x to the power of minus 2, minus 2 times the coefficient, minus 2, exponent goes down to minus 3. Typically, you want to write the final answer in the form of the original question. So you come back, if that is uh, what you want, 3x squared plus 1 minus 2 over x cubed. You go down one more notch here, you take a common denominator, opposite of this, you go backward, x cubed times that, makes 3x5, x cubed times 1 is x cubed and then you have 2 to subtract. So that is our f prime. Let's go ahead and write the uh, function itself and its derivative. Well, the function was x to the power of 5 plus, I forgot what we had, x squared, x cubed, excuse me, plus 1 over x squared we differentiated this, and what we got is 3x5 plus x3 minus 2 over x cubed. I'm afraid some students might object to me, but let me say this one more time. From here to here, what we didn't do was to differentiate denominator, differentiate the numerator. Look at it. This is x squared. I didn't differentiate this. I didn't differentiate numerator. It has nothing to do with that at all. So whenever it comes with the multiplication and division, you have to be very careful. Otherwise, uh, things are not going to work in this course. If you get this thing wrong, you can't pass calculus 1. OK. Uh, I guess I leave the rest of these exercises to you to work on and we are going to practice them in the next the meeting. So, good luck and God bless.